This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1945, an excerpt from the book, Rewriting Our Stories, by Dr. Derek Gladwin, and I'm Justin Mollick, your very own personal narrator. Welcome to an award-winning podcast that's thanks to you, where blogs are narrated to you for free with permission from the websites. Sometimes book excerpts too, like today. And I'll tell you about today's author right after the reading, so for now, let's get right to the book excerpt and start optimizing your life. An excerpt from the book, Rewriting Our Stories, by Dr. Derek Gladwin. In our professional and personal lives, we are increasingly expected to know our brand, how we define and sell our skills in the so-called marketplace. Linked to consumerist culture, people are portrayed as a product being bought and sold. Literally branding ourselves furthers the problem of connecting our salvation or worth to our labor in the socioeconomic system. Relying on stories of scarcity based upon the desirability of our personal brands stems from a culture of fear. Branding illustrates the power of our personal, professional, and social stories in a rather diminishing way, reducing our being to a brand where our only value is based upon the number of likes, followers, or sales our brand attracts. The American artist and film director Andy Warhol sarcastically quipped how consumerist pop art is all about liking things. Instead of thinking of our own brand, let us consider our own story. We are not selling ourselves, our being, but rather we are constantly writing and creating many versions of ourselves in the different contexts in which we live. Recognizing our story rather than our brand reinforces autonomy and leads to both personal and potentially collective liberation. In the vast ocean of personalities and voices within the digital information age we live in, it is important to express what might already be obvious. We weave distinct stories within the fabric of the larger social tapestry of story making. We represent infinite personal and communal stories waiting to be experienced and told. One way to begin is to think of yourself and your life in terms of a story. Ask yourself some of the following questions to recognize who you are in your story. How do I perceive myself? Do I believe this story version of myself? How do I think others perceive me? Are my perceptions of myself the same or different than the perceptions others have of me? Which characters do I want to be in my current story? If the final question is unanswerable, then spend some time writing the attributes and characteristics of who you want to be, reflecting on your values, desires, and dreams. Consider the many roles you play in your stories. Create a list of characters, son or daughter, mother or father, guide, visionary, leader, author, learner, doer, protector, creator, or lover. These descriptions can draw on your family background, relationship history, or professional experience. They can also propose new roles you may wish to play or new ways of imagining yourself. Asking someone, what is your story, is the same as asking them, who are you? What are your values? How do you show up in the world? It can seem daunting to both ask and answer these questions, but it is an incredibly useful foundation for rewriting your past, current, and future stories. Let us reflect on Ben Okri's storytelling perspective, quote, one way or another, we are living the stories planted in us early on along the way, or we are also living the stories we planted knowingly or unknowingly in ourselves. We live stories that either give our lives meaning or negate it with meaninglessness. If we change the stories we live by, quite possibly we change our lives, end quote. Because our lives are filled with fluctuating stories, the question is more concerned with when our stories will change rather than if they ever will. The trick to this process involves proactively rewriting our stories rather than having them continually written for us a practice that stems from education and awareness leading to personal and social wellness. To build on Oakry, how can we proactively write stories that give our lives meaning? Stories make sense of our transitions and represent meaning in our lives. It all begins with us. As a result, it is valuable to become aware of the value systems from which we operate and clarify these during transformations in our families, relationships, career, health, or social groups return to those stories as rough drafts continually being revised. 
I was recently speaking with my friend Sarah, who is in her late 40s. To her dismay, she is finding some of her longtime social groups dissolving. She expressed a paradox of feeling both sadness and relief about this. Sarah revealed that many of her friends have changed and this has shifted the values and interests in her social circles. Although she understood the fluid dynamics of social groups, she was surprised it happened with one group in particular because of its cohesiveness for over 30 years. Sarah also acknowledged that one reason this particular group of friends fragmented is because of the increasing levels of fear they have been experiencing in their lives and how each of them has coped with their mounting fears in middle age. Some have taken to medicating with drugs, alcohol, or pharmaceuticals, while others have shifted their political views and social values entirely, building new narratives for themselves. Perhaps Sarah's story sounds familiar? It reflects how our stories are always changing based upon who we are at any given moment. Recognizing who we are in our constantly changing stories remains an ongoing process, and it is an exciting opportunity. You just listened to an excerpt from the book, Rewriting Our Stories by Dr. Derek Gladwin. I'll tell you about him in just a sec, but first, I've been using a natural face serum for men that I wanted to tell you about. I've had dry skin for as long as I can remember, and I never got into special lotions or serums because they rarely work or they have ingredients that are questionable at best. And I came across Caldera Labs The Good, which is appropriately named, It was named by GQ as the best natural face serum for men and made from 27 active plant botanicals. These are non-toxic, 100% from plants. Makes my skin look and feel really smooth and fresh. And not just me, but in their clinical trial, 96% of men saw healthier skin. And besides all that, you know it is good when you can try it 100% risk-free. If you don't love it, after 60 days, they will refund you in full. That is a long time to really try it and see how it's working for you. And I got a special offer for the Optimal Living Daily audience. Receive 20% off your first purchase of The Good. Go to calderalab.com and use discount code OLD at checkout. That's C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B.com and use discount code OLD at checkout. And thank you to Dr. Derek Gladwin for the excerpt. He's an assistant professor in language and literacy education at the University of British Columbia and has authored books on narrative, media, and eco-literacy, including Contentious Terrains and Ecological Exile. He also supports individuals and groups with narrative coaching. He has a wide background having worked as a musician, high school teacher, writer, and editor, And his book that you heard an excerpt from today shows how to use the therapeutic power of storytelling to rewrite and transform negative stories to achieve greater empowerment and well-being in our lives. And he also has a podcast about it, same name as the book, Rewriting Our Stories, so you can check that out. But in either case, come by Derek Gladwin for a lot more. That's D-E-R-E-K-G-L-A-D-W-I-N.com for a lot more, and I have that linked in this episode's description. I'll leave it there for today. Thank you for being here and listening every day. Have a very happy rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow where optimal life awaits.